Most of you know me, but interestingly enough, none of you know where I live. Everybody thinks I live in Chicago or Colorado or something else, but I actually live in St. Louis. How many people knew that? Like nobody, see what I mean? I actually live on an airplane, um, and I do uh, travel a lot, but I live in the same house in St. Louis here that I raised my children in, and I have a huge investment in the community. We have over 1,000 employees here, and we continue to grow our business rapidly uh, here and, and across the country. And we now have the largest architecture firm in the state with the merger of Bates and Forum. Clayco does have a large North American footprint, and we're currently working in over 30 states and 35 cities. So we have a pretty good view of what's happening in those uh, communities. St. Louis has many positive attributes, but we do also have challenges and things that we have to fix. But by no measure are we unique. For one thing, I think right now we have incredible energetic leadership in the community, and I've witnessed directly working with Steve Lida and Mark Kern, and particularly working with Sheila Sweeney. Um, I would tell you that I would put her on a par with any real estate developer that I've worked with across the country. I mean, working with her, getting in the trenches, is uh, really, really hard work, because she works you. And uh, recently, I worked with that whole team on this Amazon proposal, and I'm really not sure what Amazon's going to do, although they are my largest client, and I do have some insight. So I don't know what they're going to do, but I'll tell you this. We put an amazing proposal together that really showed off St. Louis's assets, and we were honest about our deficits, and we talked about plans to work on those for a positive outcome. Anybody who hasn't seen the Amazon proposal, I think you can go on St. Louis Partnerships website and see the whole proposal, see the work that went into it, but also really look at it carefully, the written document, because I think it's a great assessment of where we're at in St. Louis. I still think if Amazon chose St. Louis, that it would be a great choice for them and it would be a good outcome overall. My takeaway is that we have incredible development opportunities, uh, things that I really didn't even know about the community myself. And looking at our entire inventory of land in, comparison, in comparing our cost of living in St. Louis to other communities that we'd be competing with, we're very competitive and our development costs are terrific. And I don't know how many people have ridden Metrolink from one, from one end to the other in its complete form and got off at every stop and walked around. But everybody who lives in St. Louis should do it. It's an amazing asset that we have right at our fingertips. The community has real challenges too, though, in terms of skilled workforce. We heard a little bit about that today. It's true. We're desperate for a more skilled workforce. Our education systems have to get better. Even at the college level, we're not producing enough technology experts and software engineers. But quite frankly, I'll tell you another thing that I know is that most of the other cities, including the 20 cities that were shortlisted by Amazon, they don't have enough either. And some of them, even major cities, are in worse trouble than St. Louis is in. The biggest issue I saw in the Amazon proposal, though, was in our disconnected uh, kind of effort with the state. I know Rob Dixon is here, and I know we're going to fix that. But I'm pretty certain that Missouri was the only state that actually turned in its own proposal separate from the communities. And I think, quite frankly, that Amazon was confused by getting all of these different proposals instead of getting a single, unified, excellent proposal. I think the community would also benefit from becoming more unified um, and having the, the county and the city merge. And I'm personally a drum beater for that to happen sooner rather than later. I think, you know, the 500 million or billion dollars a year in extra cost is probably a very low estimate. It has to be multi-billion billions of dollars that are wasted that could go to some of the things that the mayor talked about. But it's not the, even the money that is the reason why we should do it. 
it's a cultural issue. So uh, I think the communities also need business leaders to work very closely with the political and re religious leaders to prepare St. Louis region for the sweeping changes that are happening, happening across the world. As we move from an industrial, uh, com, uh, an, an industrial economy to a technology economy, the major changes that are gonna happen with people moving from small towns to larger urban areas. I mean, the next 20 years are gonna really create incredible changes that we just have to get ready for. And I think by merging and this work that we're gonna do with Rob Dixon and the state is gonna be terrific for us. So I think I just wanna take one more, put one more little bit of emphasis on the business community's role. You know, we have the Chamber of Commerce, we have the RCGA, there's the Missouri Chamber is here today. We have civic progress, we have the St. Louis, we have, I mean, I don't know, I think we might have 15 or 20 organizations. Spending a, as much time in Chicago as I do, as big as the city is, as many areas of uh, disparate interests that there are in Chicago, I will tell you that they have a very powerful single voice in their Chamber of Commerce. And I've seen it, I've witnessed it, I've been welcomed into it, and I think there's a lot to learn from some of these other cities, but we have to bring our business community fully into the process of supporting our political leaders, and we have to be listening to the citizens through their religions and their educations and their schools. It can't just be the two pieces. It really is gonna take everybody together. So Clayco's grown from two people in 1984 to um, over 2,000 people and $2.4 billion in revenue this year. And I think the main reason that we've done that is because we always believe that we can instead of we believe that we can't. And so the last message that I'd like to leave you with is that the most frustrating thing that I find in St. Louis is that we kind of have this inferiority complex. There's an enormous amount of negativity. When we first got the the RFP for the Amazon proposal, the, the most disheartening thing that, that was happening, and I know Sheila saw this, I know the mayor saw this, I know Steve and Mark deal with this all the time, is the enormous amount of negative kind of beating ourselves up that went on in the written press, that went on in the media, and that was in the social media. I started to try to respond to it, but then I finally gave up. And so what I would just say, is that the number one thing that we have to do is change our attitude in St. Louis. We have to be more positive, and we have to ask the negative naysayers to be more positive and, and hold them accountable for helping us make a difference. I always say that culture and a positive attitude trump strategy in every challenge. I think with the current leadership that we have sitting in the room right now, with the right level of business support that we can make that change. But we have to start now and we have to do it every day. I know I'm personally committed to doing my part and I'm asking all of you to come along. Thank you. Thank you.